plug in one adapter. And see it start bubbling? It's starting to work. Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to walk through um, electrolysis as a means of removing rust uh, from surfaces that are um, probably hard to get to manually or too large to be feasible to do manually. Um, electrolysis is very useful for removing rust gently without um, actually removing any more material than is absolutely necessary. It's a good gentle way of removing rust and it seems kind of like black magic until you do it once or twice and then you realize there's really just a lot of common sense behind it and it's uh, a cheap and easy way to um, to remove rust. Um, you know, electroplating is used all over the world for different things. The process of using electricity to move material from one conductive surface to another is not new technology. Um, but I'm all, you know, I'm, I, I was really surprised to find how easy it was to hook one of these up and, and use it. Um, the main thing that I used electrolysis for was to rebuild the rear end and the Ranger. Uh, that 8.8 rear end, which is, what, five, six feet long, um, was covered in rust all the way down the axle tube, from one end to the other. Um, the bearings were gone, you know, the whole, the whole thing was just completely covered in rust. Um, and I needed a way of getting the rust out of the inside of the axle tube, which is basically a big cylinder, you know, six feet long. Um, in addition to getting into all the nooks and crannies that I couldn't get to by hand. Uh, so I set up a larger electrolysis tank where I took the whole uh, rear end and dipped it down in, uh, did half of it, pulled it out and did the other side, and then did some cleanup um, after that, and it worked great. Um, so that made me a firm believer in this as a process in general. We've got today, as a demonstration, we've got a hummingbird feeder. It's got some corrosion going on, and, and it's probably going to pull some of the other plated material off of this metal. I'm not quite sure what this is, if it's, been, if it's brushed, or um, it has some sort of coating on it. So uh, while it doesn't remove paint, if there's, a, um, if there's another conductive material on there, it will pull that off, um, or it's, it's likely to. Um, so it's very gentle on the material itself, but if there's other coatings or materials that are on there, just be careful. It might take that stuff off too. Uh, you want to try to keep it to just iron oxide as well, because when you're done, or, or rust, um, when you're done, your tank is going to be full of, you know, basically a bunch of rust and, and uh, material that's come off of the, um, the work surface. Um, and to dispose of that, you just throw it out. But if you've got like, you know, zinc or, you know, other heavy metals in there, um, you're going to be dumping that off into the soil and you don't want to do that. So, uh, just be careful with what you're actually removing. Um, okay. So let's get started. So that's an overview of what it is. Here's how you set it up. Uh, the tank is here. You're going to put water in this tank. Uh, the tank just needs to be big enough to hold your, um, whatever your materials are, plus, and this is actually not getting, this is all plastic. Um, so whatever your material is or that you want to remove the rust from, and you need an anode and a cathode, which are the two electrical conductors in the circuit. So I use a piece of wire for the, for the workpiece, and then this is the sacrificial anode right here. So the, the plating process takes, to look kind of imagine it visually, you've got a positive piece here to connect to the positive pole, and you've got a negative uh, piece here which is connected to the negative pole. What's going to happen is current's going to flow from this piece to this piece through the electrolyte that you create in the tub, basically. So the tub needs to be non-conductive, first of all. Um, and you're going to create an electrolyte in that tub, and you're going to 
add some washing soda, which is sodium carbonate, I believe. Let me just, uh, yeah, maybe it's, you don't want sodium bicarbonate. I think you want, yeah, this is sodium carbonate. Uh, washing soda can be found anywhere. Um, so you add some of this to the water to create your electrolyte, which allows current to flow through the water. Um, and it takes the current through here and moves all of the uh, material that it can grab onto and pull off onto this surface here. So this becomes the sacrificial piece. This will get even more rusty than it already is. So I've picked an old mower blade. I think that'll work all right. Um, and then we'll hook the negative uh, post of our system to this. The other component is a power source. Now this part might be a little trickier for you to come by, but what I've got are two AC adapters for, um, uh, for laptops. And these run at 19 volts DC, so you're going to be doing DC input here. Um, and I ran them in series, so I actually have a pack here that's um, 38 volts. Uh, so you can run higher voltage and more current through some of the larger work pieces. On this piece here, we probably don't need it. And it works better if it works slowly um, uh, and over time. So you have to be kind of patient. It doesn't happen overnight. I mean, it can on a, on a piece that doesn't need a lot of work. But, uh, for instance, the, the rear end of the Ranger took a, the two weeks, something like that. So um, you need a DC power source. Um, this is rated for uh, 4.7 amps at 19 volts DC. So um, the, the, the more you increase your voltage and amperage, the more work it's going to be able to do. Um, I've seen people use DC welders for this stuff for bigger things. Um, <clears throat> it'll all work the same. It's just a matter of how much push and voltage and how much current output can you really handle. Um, <clears throat> so, I've got the two power sources here, hooked in series. I'm just going to double check with my voltmeter and make sure I'm still getting an output. I actually, actually haven't used this in a while. I haven't had a need for it. 19 volts there. So we'll start with 19 volts. Yeah, so what I did is I took um, jumper cables and uh, spliced in the wiring for the outputs on the AC adapters, AC-DC adapters. And then I put an inline fuse here. Probably a good idea to put a 10 amp fuse in there just to make sure. Um, and this all goes on, you know, Ohm's Law, so you're only going to pull as much current as is really needed. Um, so we've got water in this jug. We're going to add some washing soda. You don't want too much, but you want enough to allow the current to, to flow. Um, there are calculators online and resources to uh, tell you how much of this, what's the uh, the ratio of soda to water. It's less than you would think. And I can't remember what it is. I'm just kind of doing it by feel. I found that it's not, it wasn't terribly picky about it. And it will get more concentrated as the water evaporates. So here's the piece that's going to be sacrificed. Here. Okay. And you want to keep this piece isolated from this piece. Otherwise the, the system just shorts out and it doesn't do anything. So you take your pieces to be worked on and make sure that whatever piece you're connecting it to you get a nice good firm contact on this conductor because this is basically the conductor for this circuit. So you got to be you got to be mindful that it's path of least resistance like all electricity, and if it 
can flow around this stuff and not do anything to it, it will. And we got some hardware here. I don't really need to do the hardware, but why not? Then I don't have to take it to a wire wheel. Wrap it around there. Okay, so there's our basic setup there. Now we want to make sure we don't touch this piece, so that's kind of the tricky part, right? Lay that down in the solution. Make sure it's completely coated in the solution. Um, and you don't want your actual leads to be um, immersed in fluid because they will also act as the conductors. So you want to keep them isolated if you can. So your positive side of your circuit goes here, maybe. These cables are a little funky. Make sure it doesn't hit that metal. Okay. And the negative side of the circuit goes to the piece that's connected to the work. Probably just skewed. Yeah, this is going to be the tricky part is trying to get this to grab. Here, what I'll do is I'll just wrap it around it. Make sure it's got good contact. There we go. Okay. Uh, everything is immersed. Here's a close-up view of the setup before we turn it on. Here's the anode. That's the part that's going to get all the bad stuff. Positive side down into the fuse coming from these two adapters here. And then here's the negative post here, which is connected to the work pieces there. And you can see they're separated. They're not touching each other. So the fluid becomes the becomes the path. Hook to a 110 source there. So we've got AC coming in, DC uh, going out, and then the other side of the cables here. I've just connected a meter so I can see what kind of voltage I'm getting, just to confirm it's working. But you'll see here in a minute. You can tell when it's working. And right now everything's pretty dead. So nothing's happening right now. I'm going to plug it in. We'll just plug in one adapter. And see it start bubbling? It's starting to work. We've got about 17, 18 volts. It's going to start working its magic. And we can increase the voltage by plugging in the other one. Oh, that's right. Oh, that one's kind of funky, isn't it? There we go. Yeah, I was having a problem with one of the adapters. It doesn't like, uh, it doesn't hold under a load, I remember now. Anyway, so we've got one adapter hooked up, which is giving us about that much volts. And you can see the current that's going through this. It's just nuts. It's turning into a foam. What we'll see is that even where this wire is touching in here, this conductor, it'll clean the rust off of this piece too. Um, but likewise, if this positive post here is actually down in the material, that plating will go over to this, but also over to this, so it'll corrode that. you got to be careful. Uh, so we'll leave it hooked up and see how it does. So here is the electrolysis tank after sitting for about a day and a half. Um, I ended up uh, hooking up both AC adapters. I got them both to power on fine. So at one point it was really cooking. It was The tub was getting real warm. There was a lot of reaction happening and 38 volts coming in. Um, I'm not sure what the amperage was, but 
based on the amount of heat it was generating. There was quite a bit of work being done. You can see most of the material has been taken from here and moved over to the sacrificial piece. You got some stuff laying down in the bottom. One of the things I wanted to mention that I didn't before is that it's probably a good idea to keep your sacrificial anode up off of the floor a little bit so that it doesn't contact um, any of the material as it drops down. Um, you know, when the reaction's happening, a lot of this is on the surface at the top, then eventually it all kind of settles down. And uh, this is about when you know it's it's done all it's going to do. You can look and see some of the some of the bubbling there. It's it's doing a little bit, but it's not going to do much more than that. Uh, there's just not enough material left. So um, yeah, we'll take it out and see what it looks like. And you can see it just wipes right off, and you're left with. The rust. Now there's some pitting. You know, you're not going to get. It's not going to do anything for the pitting or the, you know, the distortion that's already occurred. And see, it didn't react with anything over here except the very edge. There was that coating was taken off. Um, let's take a look at this piece. Yep, removed all the stuff. Left with a clean surface there. So I'll let it sit down in the bath and then we'll just scrape away anything that's still stuck on there. That's that's basically how it works. It's pretty simple. This took about a day, day and a half, and uh, really no manual labor involved except for hooking up the tank. So I encourage you guys to, to try it. It's it's pretty simple and kind of fun to watch, honestly.